What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel, talking some college football betting. Out of the week, week 12 main slate on Saturday. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you today by DraftKings Sportsbook. They have a special offer for you. We'll talk about a little later in the show. But until then, hit the thumbs up button and we'll get started right now. Let's do it. All right. Diving into the week 12 main slate of games. We'll kick things off with Georgia taking on Kentucky. 22 and a half points spread here in favor of Georgia, Kentucky. They're the home underdog. Total is 49 points. All kinds of look ahead stuff for Georgia at this point in the season. Probably trying to get healthy for that SEC championship game. But this team is playing a Kentucky team kind of on their last leg here, dealing with a lot of injuries. Will Levis appears to be playing through injuries. He's been listed multiple times this year with multiple different injuries and hasn't gone well for Kentucky. They've, I mean, they're fresh off the Vanderbilt loss, giving Vanderbilt their first SEC victory. And I forget how long, but hasn't been, been recent. And they only had a 36% postgame win expectancy. So this team is incomplete free fall offense, not able to get it done. And they'll be facing Georgia. Meanwhile, on the other side, Georgia, they've been able to get it done really across the board on offense. Their run game is getting healthier. Setson Bennett's played well, delivering the ball efficiently to his pass catchers. The line here is a bit much, but honestly, it's impossible for me to back Kentucky right now with some of the injuries that they've played through, especially Will Levis. I'll be looking at a potential Georgia team total, but honestly, this is more of a stay away spot for me than anything. And there are better games on the board to get to, even though Georgia has all the name value. All right, go to TCU Baylor. This is a game I do like. You've got TCU as a two and a half point road favorite over Baylor, 57 total. And if you've been watching these videos, you know that I've been one that's been riding the TCU bandwagon, not one of the people calling them frauds. And there's a couple of reasons why. Well, if you look back at some of their post game win expectancies, I think the West Virginia game stands out. A lot of people pissed about the Hail Mary cover. Wasn't a Hail Mary. They had a 96.4% postgame win expectancy in that game, an average margin of victory, 14 points. Honestly, they were lucky that it came down to the final play. They should have smashed West Virginia. They averaged nearly a first down every single time they ran a play. And that's kind of been the story with TCU all season long. This offense is hyper-efficient. Max Duggan is legitimately a Heisman contender. And this offensive line is solid. They're 21st in pass blocking, 36th in run blocking. That neutralizes the biggest strength of the Baylor defense. They have an awesome front seven, especially their defensive lines. Very, very good. But the TCU offensive line has played well themselves. And then on top of Duggan, you've got Kendry Miller, hyper-efficient running back. They go four deep at wide receiver, led by future NFLer Quentin Johnson, who appears to be getting healthier, played through the ankle last week, scored the go-ahead touchdown. And on the other side, I'm not sure how Baylor is going to manufacture points. They've struggled at times to score this year. They have a pseudo game manager, Blake Shapin, under center. Their offensive line is good. They're in the top 20 in both pass blocking and run blocking. But TCU actually ranks 42nd in run defense this year. No, it's not the strength of their team. And I think they can be exploited by other higher powered offenses. But Baylor's not that. And I think if you dedicate extra coverage to the run, this should be a game that TCU does have advantages in. Surprised to see this under a field goal. I personally bet this myself at minus one and a half. And at two and a half, I think it's fine. I don't want anything north of a field goal. That's where I'd start looking at Baylor. But at the moment, it's going to be TCU for me. We'll continue to back the Horned Frogs. Next game, we'll go USC, UCLA. Seeing a lot of people back in UCLA in this game. Interesting to me, considering this might be the healthiest USC has been all year. And that's considering Travis Dye was carted off with an injury last week. But we look at the drop-off from Dye to Austin Jones. Should not be drastic. Austin Jones has actually been efficient this year. He's just not Travis Dye, so he hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities. All that to say, I think this is probably just a slight drop-off, nothing drastic for the offense. And then they've been banged up at linebackers specifically all year, and I think they're getting back all their players, including Eric Gentry, who's been out for a while, but he's a key piece to this defense. So that should help them, especially in the front seven. Their run defense ranks 71st. You'd expect that to improve a little bit if Gentry plays, and I expect the other linebackers to as well. And then this UCLA tack is predicated on the run. They do have a fairly efficient passing game, but this is a run-based team. They run through Charbonnet. They run through DTR. If you can stop that a little more here, that's going to be key for USC. And there's not really a home field advantage here. I mean, we're talking about 
UCLA playing USC. There might honestly be more USC fans in the stadium than UCLA fans. So I'm not worried about anything home field advantage wise. And then just really across the board, this favors USC. They have the better offensive line. They're top 13 in both pass blocking and run blocking. UCLA is pretty good as well. A little worse in pass blocking where they rank 41st. But then UCLA also ranks 94th in run defense. I expect USC to have success here. So minus two, completely fine with me. I'll back USC, healthiest they've been all year long. Michigan, Illinois, look ahead spot. Uh, it might be. They certainly play Ohio State next week. And the winner of that game goes to the college football playoff. The loser, maybe on the outside looking in, depending on if TCU and USC and some other teams take care of business. And it comes down to the level of competition, especially for Michigan. I mean, this Michigan team with one loss, unless there's chaos, does not deserve to be in there. Their non-con featured the likes of Hawaii, Colorado State, UConn, just disastrous, disastrous non-con. Anyway, so they play Illinois here. They're 18-point favorites, 41 total. Illinois has a key injury. Chase Brown me and my co-host Ben Raza did the betting you podcast earlier this week where we thought Chase Brown would be out. He left last week's game really late. Couldn't put any weight on his leg, but then the coaching staff said there's a good chance he plays. Now my question is to what level, how healthy is he? What do we see from Chase Brown? How much? Because he's the key in the game. If he does not play love Michigan here, I bet them myself already minus 17. I'm locked into that. I'm not going to buy out. At 18, I still want to take Michigan, but just Chase Brown, if he plays, I have a little less interest in this because he's a guy that can create on his own, move the chains, and slow the game down. And it's a large point spread. We're talking 18 points with a total of 41. That could be enough where if Chase Brown just sustains a few drives, maybe it's Michigan still rolls Illinois, but Illinois' drives are long enough and the game is slow enough where this stays within the total. So I'm looking entirely at Chase Brown here. If he does not play, I would be more than willing to back Michigan at this number. Otherwise, I'm probably just going to stick with my minus 17 and think Michigan rolls regardless. And I mean, we didn't talk about anyone else other than Chase Brown. This Illinois team has started to show severe cracks. They also have a level of competition concerns, primarily in their non-con where they played Wyoming, Virginia, and Chattanooga. But they've recently lost a couple more games. They have a loss to Purdue now. Of course, there was the loss to Indiana earlier this year. All that to say they've shown cracks. Michigan has ran up the score on a lot of really key teams, most important of which was Penn State. All right, want to take some time out of the program to talk to you about our presenting sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. Whole goal of this channel is to find you the best edges in the sports betting markets. Build that bankroll, and honestly, one of the best ways to do so right now is to take advantage of the sports betting promos across the industry. These are promos that are not going to last forever Nasty customer acquisition battle going on in the industry, but you can take advantage of this. And one way to do so, DraftKings has a phenomenal offer right now where you can bet $5 on any pregame money line, and that bet turns into $200 if it wins. So the key here, and I think the best way to get your free $200 essentially, is to take a large favorite on the money line. So for example, we're going to do college football. This is a college football video. When I look across the board, I see Texas A&M, they're minus 33 and a half, and they're playing UMass. So yeah, Texas A&M hasn't had a great year, but they're playing arguably the worst team in the entire country. The chances of this bet hitting are like 99 and a half percent, which means you're getting a free $200 added to your bankroll, which you can use on more college football, whatever it is you like to bet. And all you have to do is take advantage of this by clicking the link in the description below. Again, it's a pregame money line, so make sure to hit that Texas A&M pregame money line. They're going to take down UMass, and you're going to get a free $200. Ohio State, Maryland, the opponent of Michigan next weekend, Ohio State. They travel to Maryland. They're 27.5-point favorites. This is another look-ahead spot, but unlike the Michigan one, I have a little more interest in Maryland. Maryland's at least put up quality scores this year and put on a – Ryan Day alleges that he's going to play, but we're going to see. And how much does he play? I mean, their fourth string running back, Dallin Hayden, was the number 19 recruit in his class at the running back position. He's a four-star. They don't need to rush any of these guys back on the field to run all over Maryland. And I would love to back Maryland here, but honestly, this might be more of a stay away from me because Talia Tagovailoa has been horrific. Now, he previously was a prolific pocket passer, and... He has all the same weapons, Rakeem Jarrett, Dante Demas, Jacob Copeland. They're all still playing. But 
Taka Oliva, Taka Bailoa went down a few weeks ago, missed a couple games. And since he's come back, he has been horrible. One of the worst signal callers in the country. He threw for 74 yards on 22 attempts last week. And then against Wisconsin, this Maryland team only put up 189 yards. Talib Tagovailoa is a complete shell of himself right now. And I don't know if it's going to change. I don't know that he's fully healthy. So for me, it's a stay away unless this gets to 28. I cannot bet. I cannot put real American dollars on Talib Tagovailoa right now. Texas takes on Kansas, a nine-point spread in favor of the Longhorns coming off the loss. 63 and a half total. This is one where I wanted Kansas plus 10, but the line moved quickly. I did not get it. And the reason is I think we're going to get a healthy Jalen Daniels. He's been suiting up for games. He's been practicing. Their coaching staff continues to say the right things about him getting closer and him being available soon. How healthy is he is a big question here. But honestly, Texas has shown a lot of cracks. Their defense is actually the strength of their team. So getting Daniels back is key in this game. I would not want to back Kansas if we get word that it's Jason Bean. I definitely do not want to back Kansas if it's Ethan Bosco, who had to come into last week's game after Jason Bean got hurt. All this to say, Daniels is the most important handicap in the entire, not the entire week, but the entire game here for sure. So let's get into the stylistics that I think Daniels can exploit. Well, Texas has shown cracks. They're a strong defensive team. And I think they're going to score themselves. When you look at Kansas's defense, 89th and Rundy, 90th in coverage. The issue with backing Texas is Quinn Ewers has been terrible. I mean, pr- since the Oklahoma game, like prior to last week, he'd only been completing 51% of his passes for 6.5 yards per attempt. Last week, he was at 4.4 yards per attempt. So he's been terrible. Quinn Ewers should have been benched last week. I don't think they're going to bench him here, but I mean, that, that is coming. And Hudson Card can certainly play the game managerial role. Meanwhile, they should just be able to run on Kansas. Like Kansas 87th run defense, Bijan should run all day over this team. The The main issue is Quinn Ewers. So that's why I'm looking at Kansas here. The plus nine is not really enticing to me unless I get c- clear word that Daniels is playing. Otherwise, honestly, I might have my finger on the trigger for a Texas inside 10. Right now, it's, it's kind of settling in a no man's land without word on Daniels. I think if he plays, he's the clear value. If he doesn't, Texas clear value. So the line is sort of middling this news. I'll wait and see. Prefer the Kansas side. But honestly, if I could snipe a Texas minus nine, if Daniels is out, I would do that too. Ole Miss takes on Arkansas. A really fun game here in the SEC, even though there's not much on the line after Ole Miss dropped that Alabama game. Key injury is KJ Jefferson, and it looks like he's going to play. A lot of people were shocked he did not play last week. And all the word coming out of Arkansas is that he's getting closer. It's a shoulder injury, so there's a good chance he's not 100% even if he does return. But we know KG Jefferson's a dynamic athlete that he can win on the ground. When you look at Ole Miss's defense, they're 55th in run D, 33rd in pass rush, 44th in coverage. Their biggest weakness is on the ground, and KJ exploits that. Raheem Sanders is still there. And plus, they can be explosive when they need to. Meanwhile, On the other side, Jackson Dart has not been able to overcome a lot of the better matchups he's faced this year. Arkansas is still weaker in the secondary, 112th in coverage, but Dart has not been efficient. And this Arkansas secondary is getting a little bit better. Miles Slusher is expected to play here after the suspension last week. They're still down, guys. Like, Catalan's not walking through that door. But it's not quite as drastic as it had been at the midpoint of the season. So Ole Miss coming off that deflating loss to Alabama, a game they should have won, by the way. Post-game win expectancy above 50 points. but deflated their coach is potentially going to leave i mean it's a mess in all miss meanwhile arkansas also playing for bowl eligibility they can get there they need to win they're at home here and they're dogs in front of their home crowd plus two for arkansas right now i would love to get a plus three but i still think plus two is fine i'll be back in the razorbacks here oklahoma state oklahoma this is a really fun game and one i actually do like And I think it comes down, as you can see, most of these games due to quarterback injuries. Spencer Sanders is hurt. He surprisingly returned to their last game, led them to the victory. They had two turnovers in the game. Their only two turnovers came when Gundy was on the field. They won the turnover battle 5-2 to against Iowa State. Gutty performance by their defense as well. And that's what I want to hone in on. Oklahoma's defense is worse than Oklahoma State's. You look across the board here. Run defense, Oklahoma State 50th. Oklahoma Coverage, it's basically the same. Oklahoma State 80th, Oklahoma 84th. 
But Oklahoma State's defense is slightly better than Oklahoma's. If Sanders plays, he'll have all his weapons back. Richardson returned, Jaden Bray returned, Braden Johnson returned. Everyone's healthy for this team on offense. If we have Sanders delivering the ball to these pass catchers and these runners, I actually like them plus seven and a half against Oklahoma, who hasn't shown the ability to stop anybody. So this is going to be key. Watch Spencer Sanders. Haven't taken this yet, but seven and a half. It's right outside that key number. Love this year. And honestly, the over is a decent play too. Both these teams play at hyperspeed. We have two teams, top 10 in pace. That is something I like as well. Tough game to talk about at this point. We have Utah taking on Oregon. The biggest thing here, Bo Nix. He briefly left Oregon's last game. He returned, but his mobility was certainly compromised. He was limping all over the field for this team. And there's a rumor that he's not going to play in a pretty decent rumor. A teammate was in an interview and accidentally revealed this information. And the line swung over five points. Initially, Oregon was a three-point favorite somewhere in that ballpark, three and a half, two and a half in some spots. Now Utah is a two-point favorite. I was lucky to get a slight bet down on Utah when they were a dog, but I'm going to back them minus two here. They're the healthier team. They're a team full of dogs. Motivation is a question for them somewhat, but they could still win the Pac-12. They just played their last game at home for the year. And you don't, you never like to hear this, but Cam Rising, Keithy, Kincaid, I mean, Keithy's hurt, but Kincaid and Rising, I don't know if these guys are going to play for this team next year. Rising, certainly not. He already spoke about going to the NFL, but. I think they're still trying to win the Pac-12 championship. And Rising played really hard in their last game. And Kincaid returned, so they actually have a weapon. Oregon's defense is awful. They're 74th in run D, 90th in pass rush. They're a little better in coverage, but they can't generate any pressure. Rising's mobile. That's all going to be an issue for them. If Bonix is out, which a lot of people are presuming he is, and the line indicates that he's out, I don't think it's enough. And I'll back Utah here. And that'll do it for us today with the Odd Shopper channel. Make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these games, these picks. If you agree, disagree, I'd love to hear it. You can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm available at Matt underscore Kajeski. And as always, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel on the way out. That helps us a ton. If you've done that, thank you very much. Can't tell you how much it means. Otherwise, it's week 12. We've got rivalry week next week. We'll be covering it all, so make sure to check that out. But until then, we'll see you guys later. Bye.